Got a fairly simple project here. We've got a differential input flange from my son's uh, Spitfire conversion. This is from the Mitsubishi uh, rear end, which has a symmetrical four bolt pattern and a pilot. And then he has to fabricate a new drive shaft, so he bought a yoke. I don't know what this application is. But uh, pilot's too big, and this is a rectangular pattern, so we got to do a few checks. We're just going to open this up, put four holes, proper locations for this, and uh, then he can proceed on determining how long to make the drive shaft. Both of these have a 321 clearance hole, which is a letter drill. It's a P. So 321, 2 2.431, 1.786, 2.091, 1.448 and that is exactly two and a quarter 2.250 about 98 thousandths deep. So we'll make the counter bore in this piece a thousandths bigger and we'll go a hundred thousandths deep. That way we'll clamp on the flange at a hundred, hundred and five thousandths deep. So this is what we have. We have the Drill size, what did I say that was? Like 289. This is the pattern, symmetrical from the center, two and a quarter. So we'll make our um, Counterbore 2.251, minimum of 100 thousandths deep, and that will receive this part and allow him to bolt this together. Plan on just clamping this on top of the table directly on this machine surface, so make some checks. It's flat within about a thousandths, even sitting on that narrow, that small little front end. I plan on setting this up on some reed washers. These are ground, and as long as these check out within a few tenths, I think that'll be fine for it to sit on. Those are flat within a thousandths. What's our original pilot at here? One inch nine seventy.
One and a half thousandths in here it'll be a little better. Let's get this set up. I'm using a plunger style tense indicator which is not ideal for this but I can't find my um, thousandths indicator lever, lever type. So I've got this within a thousandths TIR. It looks like this, this pilot is a little bit egg shaped but a um, thousandths are so narrower this way than this way. But I've got it dialed in. I'm going to do the bolt pattern first. So let me zero my DRO. So I need X of 1.054. and a Y of 
Okay, now I'm going to change over to a 3 16 drill bit and go through, and then we'll take it up to size. Okay, so five, sixty five, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, that's an eight hundred thousandths offset. So I can make this cut and I can sneak up to the 875. You're going to give it like 10 thousandths clearance downwards? Yes. So right now the quill's up. That's as high as my table will go. You can make it go higher. Okay, there's there's a zero. Actually, you know what? I gotta go down a little bit. 
Because what I want to do is I want to test see if it I want to zero my head. I'm going to zero my quill. And I want to come up with the knee until I just touch. And I can use that dial to go down. I'm just grazing it. Just put a witness line on it. Maybe a thousandth deep. And I need to come down 110 thousandths on the depth. That'll give him 10 thousandths. You can move this up and you can get more feet up too. Oh, you think it'll go up a little higher? Yeah, he may not have that. He may not up, down. I know what you mean. Oops. All right, now I'm going to come down 110. Do you want me to climb cut this? That's carbide. Climb cutting. That's a solid carbide titanium nitride. I went 110 deep. This is less than 100,000 projection. It's about 95 or something like that. I'm only going to give you a thousandth clearance on the diameter. It can be. Don't know if I can get the calipers in there or not. Yep. Now I'm going to yeah. outside. You got you got a burr. No, I don't want to put it on the belt sander. It's not a burr anymore.
I think that turned out all right. And as a bonus, you got the OD cleaned up. You can see that that was a little bit eccentric to the rest of the features. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing me make the modifications to this differential input flange, which is now painted up. And there is its mate. So an upcoming project, as you can see, is this drive shaft. I can show you what we did there. This little drive shaft assembly adapts um, it's a Mustang T5 at this end to the uh, Subaru differential and this end is uh, mounted to the chassis so it's not a part of unsprung weight that's just the just little half shafts out at the end but you know you're talking maybe uh, 21 inches pin to pin here so we'll do this in an upcoming video we had to machine both yokes to accept the ID of the tube um, it was it was a almost twenty thousandths interference. We had to take that down to uh, something that would just be a light press so that he could weld it. And uh, more on this and other projects in upcoming episodes. So stay tuned. I want to show you one other um, upcoming project that we've got uh, coming into the shop. Got a base here from a jib crane. Now it's it's almost brand new, but um, it came out of a wastewater treatment plant and it was on new equipment um, an all stainless steel model number excuse me the brand is Thern all stainless steel jib crane with about a 2,000 or 2,500 pound lifting capacity and the customer overloaded it and tweaked this base a little bit and it's it's hard to even tell what's wrong but on this leg back here you got a very slight, very slight bend. So it probably uh, loaded it in this direction and started to buckle this uh, diagonal brace. The manufacturer would have been better off if he had taken these pieces and you know broke uh, a 90 on them and left a little bit of a flange uh, on one side. That would have given a lot more stiffness to this, but you know, in their determination, it didn't need it for the load capacity of the crane. And the uh, end result of that is we ended up replacing this under warranty for um, customer overloading the crane. This was going to get scrapped out, but this is an all stainless steel base. It's a half inch thick, 16 inches square. Uh, it's got a five inch Schedule 40 upright tube. I need to use the table, try to determine how much this is out of plumb, if it's out of plumb. Um, before I repurpose it. But what I'm going to do is mount this near the k and t and I'm going to construct a small jib crane. I'm not looking to get 2,000 pound capacity, but if I could get a 500 pound capacity, something that will lift and uh, position my 300 pound rotary table or my 100 pound right angle plate, you know, be able to take that on and off of the, uh, of the, uh, of the k and T's table. I'll just permanently mount this on the ground near that and then show this in a build um, with, with that jib crane. We'll straighten this out best we can, determine how square this still is and uh, you know put it back to work. It's a shame to you'd be ashamed to scrap it, so I said put it in a truck. I have a use for it. So upcoming project. Hope you enjoy the Spitfire parts. Got a lot more Spitfire parts upcoming. And uh, we'll, we'll keep the videos coming to you here at uh, Engineers Workshop. Until then, thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks for the likes and shares. Keep them coming. And until then, stay safe.